All right, it's almost here, folks. Uh, to me, one of the most exciting on paper seasons the NFL has seen in a long time is right around the corner. Dolphins fans, with Dolphin fans, we've got so much storylines, but it's across the board, especially in the AFC. To me, I'm so excited to watch team after team, storyline after storyline. But my focus is on the Miami Dolphins. Been a fan for, I don't know, 40 years now or something, 1978. I'm getting tired. I want to see a win. This one is going to determine a lot. So mostly we've covered pretty much everything that's out there. I'm going to take a break, a week break before the season starts because I don't want to talk about, you know, something that happened 50 years ago or uh, some obscure little thing. I did a kicker thing. <laughs> that might have been it, but I really did find that one interesting. But I got three more things I really want to cover. And the one I'm going to cover today is leverage. The leverage, the force multiplying leverage that Hill and Waddle and Waddle together are going to create and how it's going to open so many things up. And the reality is, even if this offensive line isn't hot and Tua isn't the greatest thing since sliced bread, these two receivers are going to create such leverage, force multiplying leverage, that the offense is going to take a substantial step forward. Now, this doesn't mean going to playoffs or being a Super Bowl or, or uh, Drew, uh, two is the next Drew Brees or whatever, but there's going to be substantial growth simply based on on the leverage these two players in combination create. And I'm going to do a little film study. Uh, basically, I'm going to take the film from the Kansas City Chiefs versus the Titans and then take the Titans versus the Dolphins. I'm not going to use the, the Titans-Dolphins game film in this one. It's going to be focusing on Hill versus the Titans defense if people want me to, I'll do a study on that. But you're going to see the complications and the leverage that Hill brought and forced the Titans to respond with their own leverage, creating vast openings in areas that, even if you don't believe in to his arm, he can really hurt defenses. Now, I studied out the Titans versus the Dolphins game, and you're going to see that the way they treated Hill is very similar, but to a lesser degree, the way they treated Waddle. And if people are interested, I'll do another one just like this on Waddle. And you're going to see, when, when you see how they handle Hill, and you notice kind of way they handled Waddle, when these two guys get together, you're going, you're not going to, there's no way around it. Whether you like Tua or hate Tua, there is going to be a great deal of space created, and the passing game is going to be boosted. Now, the offensive line is going to have to be healthy, and the running game is going to have to be more than a token. And Tua is going to have to improve in some areas, but it's not about throwing 80 yards downfield. That is the least. That is not, that's not even almost nothing. Okay, so I'm going to get into that now. Leverage, we all have heard leverage. We all went to, you know, junior high and they started teaching you about fulcrums, the stick force multiply, and that's all leverage means is, is that you have, a, um, you have a certain amount of power and you have something that magnifies that power. It, you, you can see there's force multipliers in the military, in negotiations between lawyers, you have leverage, on and on it goes, trading, on uh, but in football, the leverage that I'm talking about is positional leverage. Now, teams are going to struggle and shy away from man coverage because of Waddle and Hill. It's just they're going to play lots of zone. And I chose the Titans game uh, because obviously both teams, Dolphins and the Chiefs, play the Titans. But the Titans are an unbelievable defense to study. I mean, if you have any passion for studying the game of football, study out the Titans' defense. They win at every level. They, whether it's schematic, it's adjustments, uh, whether it's the players actually winning in their situations, 
scheme, everything. At every level, they've got a phenomenal defense, and it makes it extraordinarily interesting. And their zone coverage, because we're, we're not going to see so much man, I thought their zone coverage is the perfect matchup because these guys – were down. Their secondary was secondary was beaten up, and they were playing the Bills, and they were playing the Chiefs, and they were beating them. I mean, I've talked about what they did to us, the Finns, uh, with playing nickel all day. They won before they even showed up to the day, and that's how good they are. So I'm going to take a look right here at Hill versus the Titans, and as we're going through it, you're going to see things that Mahomes did wrong that Tua can emulate, not emulate, Tua could do better. And it's not like I'm talking about, you know, the moon's made of cheese or anything like that. And you're going to see how much respect defenses have for Hill. And then, like I said, if you're interested, after I do my summation, if you want, I'll bring out some footage and show you what the, how they treated Waddle. And it was pretty similar. Obviously, the difference is Mahomes got a bigger arm. Mahomes can scramble much more. They have a better offensive line. And there, there was, there's other things outside that is showing why they did this. Down situation is going to be, a, a, you know, depending on the downs. But overall, there is a strong parallel of concern and overcompensating in zone coverage leverage. All right, so before I do that, I want to say thank you for you for all you guys stopping by. I really appreciate it. The likes, the subscribes, the comments. Without you, the show is not going down. We we'll also want to say thank you to our sponsors, Ace Per Head, because without them, this show is not happening. Ace Per Head's betting software is the premier white label platform for bookies to manage their players and grow their sportsbook operation. Click the link in the description below to get set up in minutes. Ask for the Curtis promo and get a special introductory discount. I was doing some studies on the geometric shapes of zone coverage. There is, I'm not smart enough, but I know there's probably mathematicians that are. You have to understand that, generally speaking, got 30 yards, let's say, farthest back to safety is 50 yards from sideline to sideline. So that's 1,500 square feet. And if you figure you're rushing four, you're dropping seven, that's seven guys to cover 1,500 square feet. That's like 200 and... I did the math before, so I'm not bright. <laughs> I had to do the math before. It's 214 square feet per player to cover. This is a lot of space. You can't cover it all. So you have to pick and choose what areas you're going to cover. You and And you can... Help out your, your uh, secondary by attacking certain areas, forcing the quarterback to roll out, yada, yada, yada. I understand that. But within these shapes, how um, a group of players, because it's not just one player. Like if I'm playing man coverage and you're really fast, and I'm worried about you deep. I'm going to give you a buffer. I'm going to play over coverage. That means I'm going to be on top of you. And when you're making your moves, I'm going to give you space. Depending on how I feel my speed and my recovery time is compared to your speed and recovery time is how much space I'm going to give. I'm going to give that leverage to myself as a force multiplier for my lack or concern, lack of speed and your concern of your speed. Now, in the same token, when I do this, it creates leverage for the receiver. He has the, re the leverage underneath, and if he's good enough and a quarterback back's good enough, then that's how you get those quick little underneath passes and stuff like that. So you got the whole deal. But in zone coverage, it's not one guy. Yet there's certain bits in that where the player's positional uh, is going to choose leverage. But generally speaking, there's a shape to the zone coverage. It's usually like a triangle or, you know, off-center square, like a rhombozoid or trapezoid or whatever. But how that group of people create that shape and where that leverage is, as an example, a triangle, if that point is down towards where the player is running up and you get the two players on top, that means they're creating top leverage and they're very concerned about maybe because of down and distance or your speed. So they're going to use their leverage to take the top, to 
control the top. But in the same token, they might have had the two guys at the bottom with that receivers coming up. And they're not giving you, they're giving over leverage because they're on top of the receiver, but they're not respecting them as much because they only got one guy on top. And now another way, they might take that triangle and kind of have it between the player. So the way they sh- put those shapes out and the way they handle players and where the player is reacting to those shapes really means a lot. It's a big study. I'm not going to get into it. Anyway, just for something for you guys to think about. It's a very complex concept. Very simple, but very complex. But anyway, here you go. Here's the footage. Let's take a look and see what we see. Titans, they're not afraid to play close. But a lot of times when they play close, they're really playing off. They just want to give a look and a little bit of physicality early on. And Tyreek, he's in the slot. It's very heavy. Uh opening look to shut down the ten, that, that first 10 yards. They're daring the Chiefs to go deep or at least force them to create routes to go deep. And if they do create the routes to go deep and they're dropping deep, this kind of takes away some of those routes and limits the options inside. So there's a lot of masking going on here. There's a lot of, there's a lot of showing a lot, but not so much telling everything. They drop into what looks like a cover four. They've got the triangle with the point at Hill and two uh, cover guys over the top. So this is very high over top leverage for the zone defense. And they're allowing them to get underneath. Now, this should have been a much easier play. This this should have been a very successful play. But Mahomes has has very happy feet. Instead of climbing the ladder where there's plenty of protection, he starts scrambling out and he misses some easy plays here. Hill was wide open if he had just climbed up the ladder. They can't contain him. So they're just trying to play over and try to limit it. And I I think from the way they were rushing him, they really believe Mahomes has happy feet and wasn't going to make this quick read. And this is where Tua is going to feast or go into famine because he doesn't have Mahomes' ability to scramble out. But if he can step up with that quick release, this is where he's going to find big, big plays because of the leverage that Hill creates. His speed forces zone coverage to play high over leverage, leaving very often the middle of the field or the short of the field open. It's just up to the quarterback. to If he has protection, step up, find, and make that throw. And you see right here, they've got all kinds of leverage, three triangles, top and outside, and you leave the middle wide open. And again, because I think they believe that Mahomes will not step up. And with Armstead, you won't see these free releases from the edge that you're seeing down here. And so this is a real another strong asset for the Dolphins to be able to deliver and to it to really show that he can make things happen. On this one, they're going four wides, and Tyreek's inside. You see here, and they're right up in his grill. The initial leverage of the defense is very, very tight to the line of scrimmage, but they have the single high safety playing over the top deep as a protection just in case somebody breaks loose. But watch how this thing morphs. But everybody's dropping. There's no real jams the line of scrimmage. Again, you get that pressure, and Mahomes gets a little bit of happy feet. Look at these triangles here. They've got the safety with strong leverage towards Tyreek. They're letting the the receiver at the bottom of the screen kind of free over the top. And if Mahomes had climbed the pocket again and kept his eyes on his first reads, he would have seen the receiver breaking free, and he could have probably dropped this in for a big play. Now you got the running back coming out. That's drawing one of the coverage guys. And Tyreek is basically running straight up the center of the field, and he's about to break open. Again, Mahomes had two strong options on here. Safety's trying to get over to where Hill is. He's never getting it in time. And it it could have been dropped right into the hole right here. This was another big play. And this is what Tyreek does. Tyreek creates such leverage that even with six on four, when you create a nice uh, route combination of stressing the top part of the field, it puts huge pressure. Even when you got two guys 
drop back 20, 30 yards. They still holes open up. Just comes down to the quarterback finding that hole. He had two options, Mahomes did on this one. Bottom and Hill, and he really doesn't find either of them because he's he, instead of climbing the pocket, he rolls out and that throws off his footwork, his timing, his reads, and he's not able to deliver on this one. Tyreek very rarely saw press coverage, but the Titans, they come up, they're pressing the line of scrimmage all across the board. Their leverage is towards the line of scrimmage very, very heavy. Tyreek is in the slot, circled in red. Right here, we'll see the triangulation of zone coverage. You got one at the bottom, looking left on an island. This is all going to be zone, though. It's going to change uh, dramatically once the snap happens. After the snap, they're getting uh, outside leverage on Tyreek, trying to force him out, and they're dropping back pretty, pretty heavy. You can see the sa safety's already moved back about five, six yards. This cornerback at the bottom, he's dropping, but his eyes are keeping inside leverage, but putting a lot of focus on Tyreek. You can see here the triangulation. You've got a triangle to the top, and you've got a rhombus, a trapezoid bottom. But again, notice the corner. He's got his eyes on Tyreek. They're leaving the receiver at the bottom of the screen all on his own. And you see this right here. They're trying to wrap the triangulation around Tyreek. The leverage of the defense is being forced from short to deep because of their fear for Tyreek. This leaves an easy catch and throw that, that Mahomes makes a little bit harder. He, he's very happy-footed in this. All right, so you could see. I mean, Titans defense was a little beat up through the season the secondary and they had to compensate a little bit for this beat up secondary, maybe a little bit lack of talent, great safeties. And obviously you could see pass rush, but they would get, they Hill's speed and what the fear that he generates had them showing. And this is what we saw almost all day with them. That was the game plan. They would show high leverage up to the line of scrimmage early and then bail for the most part show jamming and physicality and for the most part bail forcing Mahomes to hold his ground to survey the field and when the pressure came from the left side to step up and make the throw and he very rarely did that it seemed like they understood that this was a characteristic of him now Mahomes getting out it's dangerous he runs around scrambles he buys time and he, he either runs and picks up the other but there was a lot of meat left on the table. And this is where Tua can thrive. Teron Armstead is not going to allow that free rusher to chase Tua out. Now, it might come from another way. I Eichenberg, they might bring it from some other place. I mean, they can mix up their pressures. And it's going to be critical for Tua to step up and deliver the football. But when you see the leverage... They're constantly playing over leverage. They're constantly overcompensating by dropping deep. And this is going to leave plenty of pockets underneath for two to hit, regardless if you, Chad Pennington could hit these holes. Now, two is going to have to read them. He's going to have to step up. He's going to have to hang tough and keep his mechanics. But that quick release, and if he does all the things I just mentioned, there's going to be big holes for him to hit players. Now, this was just with Hill. As I said, the Titans treated Waddle pretty much the same. Less respect, probably like 70%. They hit a reduction of 30%. But that was also because we had the worst offensive line in football. We were playing the nickel all day. Where they knew we couldn't run the football. And yes... To his arm isn't as good as Mahomes. Mahomes has a bigger arm. But you could see it 20 yards, 25 yards with big holes, anybody could drop it in there if they maintain their discipline. And they climb the ladder, make the read, and deliver. And as I said, Waddle is going to create a quandary. Playing man is going to be 
extraordinarily dangerous. They're going to, if, especially when if they can get pressure on us. But generally speaking, it's going to be the zone coverage we're going to see. And I believe two is going to deliver. Now, this is a problem. Last problem, and I'm going to be cut it short. The force multiplier of Hill and Waddle is not going to be a long-lasting thing. This is like the Marx Brothers again, the Smurf receivers. The super, it's going to, you got three years maybe with Hill, maybe four, and then, you know, Waddle's going to get signing. You're going to, you, one of these guys is going to go, and it's going to be hard to find another guy to, to fill those shoes. But during this window here, there is going to be such force multiplication, and it's going to create an image of Tua in during this time that might not be uh, representative of his skill set. It's going to overinflate his abilities, maybe. And it's going to cause the Dolphins to have to sink cash into him. And his we might end up overpaying. Now, during this time, Tua could gain confidence. He could have Waddle signed long term. Dolphins could find no receiver in here to fit the bill. And then with that confidence and that understanding of how to play the game, this could lead to a, to a very, very good spot and, and have him achieve all the goals that lots of people had for him in the beginning. He's going to have to stay healthy, and that's another question. So we're going to see an inflated offense. How much? We'll see. Will it overprice to it for us that when this amazing combo breaks apart, maybe he won't be as good? We'll see. However you slice it, though, Tua will see a substantial rise in his production, and the offense of the Miami Dolphins will see a substantial rise. No way around it. Will it be enough? And will be indicative of to his talents. We'll see. Anyway, this is Curtis. I hope you enjoyed. I, if you're a Finn fan, you should be excited. This is a dangerous combo. Can't wait. Curtis saying, catch you next time. Be well and go Finns. Start building your own online sports book today by getting signed up with acebred.com service that allow you to book action on sports from all around the world. 